So I want to talk about pitfalls in interpreting uh, PE studies. Uh, this is something that uh, we do uh, very frequently, um, but um, uh, there's a lot of pitfalls that uh, notice people run into um, maybe without realizing. So it's, it's worthwhile going through and uh, thinking about all of these potential issues. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is based on an RSNA exhibit. Um, I've modified these slides somewhat. Um, but I want to thank uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, and particularly my resident Ariadne de Simone, who uh, put together the slides. Um, so there's a number of artifacts that may simulate pulmonary embolism, um, and we'll kind of jump into them. Um, the first few basically are essentially mixing artifacts. Um, <clears throat> so if you image um, early, um, the bolus may not have filled the entire pulmonary arterial system, uh, and you should realize that um, as contrast comes into the system, um, it's not like a uniform front, but there's a lot of mixing and turbulence that happens within the uh, pulmonary arterial system. Um, and so you can see, like in this case, we've got apparent filling defects here um, bilaterally. Now your clue that you're early is that the aorta is not going to be pacified. So here we have bright contrast in the pulmonary arteries, but not in the aorta. Um, and we tend to see this much more commonly in patients with uh, some sort of cardiac dysfunction um, or pulmonary hypertension, uh, where the flow through the pulmonary arterial system is much slower. Uh, <clears throat> now notice that these filling defects are somewhat ill-defined, wispy, have ill-defined margins, um, and this is an entity that um, several colleagues of mine, including uh, Dr. Travis Henry, have described as smoke. Um, now you can see here uh, we questioned whether these might be artifactual, and we repeated the study uh, with more of a delay. We used the aorta to trigger um, the scan, and you can see that these defects have resolved. The, there is no pulmonary embolism in this case. Um, here we have another example um, where there's mixing in the main pulmonary artery. Um, this patient clearly has heart failure and pulmonary hypertension. You see the pulmonary arteries enlarged. We have no contrast in the aorta, and we have these wispy um, ill-defined filling defects here in the main right and left pulmonary arteries. Um, and this is just a mixing artifact. It's not pulmonary embolism. Um, here we have um, <clears throat> another case. Now in this case, this patient does not necessarily have heart failure, but they do have an abnormality in their lung. Um, and so you can get focal uh, slower flow in the pulmonary artery segments because of abnormalities in the lung that cause basically uh, vasoconstriction uh, and slower flow. Um, so you can see here, there's an apparent filling defect sort of in the center of the um, uh, left lower lobe pulmonary artery here. Uh, but you can notice that this lung is abnormal. Uh, we've got like a loculated pleural effusion. We have volume loss. Um, this is clearly a post-surgical case. Uh, and uh, there was a question about filling defect here. So um, the study is repeated with the delay again, triggering off the aorta. And you can see that this pulmonary artery branch is totally normal. Some other clues, um, obviously the underlying lung disease in that segment can be helpful. Um, the other clues you can see, um, you know, thrombus tends to be low in attenuation, 40, 50 household units. If you're, if you measure the filling defect and it's much higher than that, then um, it's almost certainly not thrombus. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, these defects, as I mentioned earlier, tend to be ill-defined, um, and wispy, um, they will not uh, alter the caliber of the vessel. Um, uh, but if you have any question, it's it's very easy to just do a repeat um, with more delay. Now here we have another example. Notice that the uh, contrast opacification starts out very bright and then it slowly tapers distally. Um, we also in the axial plane see almost a fluid fluid level here where the contrast is dependent and the uh, non-opacified blood is antidependent. Um, it's another sort of typical manifestation of mixing the uh, artifacts. Uh, and again, repeat with delay show that it's resolved. Um, here we have another example caused by abnormality in the lung. In this case, there's a large pleural effusion with atelectasis of nearly the entire left lung. And you can see that there's much slower flow into the left pulmonary artery system with a lot of mixing artifacts. Um, so if you really needed to evaluate the left side, or possible PE, you'd have to do a delay. Um, <clears throat> the other uh, thing that can cause uh, mixing 
uh, mixing artifacts within the pulmonary arteries is uh, bronchial artery inflow. Um, so in patients with bronchiectasis uh, or occasionally other causes of um, chronic lung inflammation, um, you will have hypertrophy of the bronchial artery supply to that segment of the lung. And remember the bronchial arteries are fed from the aorta, so their opacification is much later than the pulmonary artery system. Um, now in patient in areas where there's abnormal lung, there are small collateral um, connections between the bronchial artery system and the pulmonary artery system. Um, and if you have slower flow in the pulmonary arteries and hypertrophied and increased flow within the bronchial arteries, you may actually get a, a shunt with flow coming from the bronchial arteries into the pulmonary artery system. Uh, and that can cause small filling defects. Um, like you can see in this case, this patient has right lower lobe bronchiectasis and small apparent filling defects in the pulmonary artery. This is a patient with cystic fibrosis <clears throat> who has uh, filling defects uh, in their pulmonary arteries. Notice in this case, you can see um, on a more delayed scan, um, quite substantial hypertrophy of the bronchial artery system. The clue in these cases is that um, you often see a uh, filling defect that is more well-defined peripherally and then it becomes wispy as it comes more centrally into the pulmonary artery. Um, and so that's a clue for it being a uh, bronchial artery inflow artifact. Uh, but regardless, the central margins are going to be wispy either in this case or ca cases caused by flow by just simple early scan and mixing artifacts. Here we have another case, a patient with some chronic inflammatory process in the right upper lobe um, with a <clears throat> filling defect, and you can see that the peripheral pulmonary arteries are not well opacified at all, and they tend to be rather small, and you have this wispy, ill-defined filling defect coming centrally um, into the right upper lobe. And we have another case um, where this patient, who I'm not showing here, uh, had chronic scarring in their right lower lobe, um, and we have this actually rather well-defined filling defect um, in the right lower lobe. Um, luckily, in this case, we had multiple priors that showed this to be um, present on many prior exams in different degrees of pacification. Um, and, uh, but given that how well it def defined it appeared on our study, we did actually recommend a repeat with delay and you can see that it is resolved. So these can, you know, be tricky in many cases. Um, and so again, just suggest that do not be afraid to recommend a repeat scan with delay if you're not sure, because otherwise you're, um, obligating this patient to have a long, long-term long anticoagulation. Now shifting to some other things that will mimic filling defects. Um, here we have a patient who um, has a lot of air entrained into their intravenous tubing. Um, before the contrast injection, you can see some uh, air bubbles in the main pulmonary artery, um, but we see air in the distal pulmonary arteries here, um, which uh, if you're looking on um, here's another example here. If you're looking on uh, the pulmonary artery windowing, um, you wouldn't necessarily notice these air bubbles, um, and you might think that these are pulmonary emboli. Um, but if you go to lung windows, you can see you can actually see the air. Um, so if you see air in the main pulmonary artery, it's something to think about um, as a possible uh, as a possible artifact. Um, here's an example of motion artifact causing apparent filling defect here. So we've got a pulmonary artery branch, which is not well opacified, uh, appears sort of well defined on the um, on the uh, mediastinal windows. But if you go to lung windows, you can see that we've got sort of a double appearance of that pulmonary artery there. So this is simply motion artifact. Um, so in generally, my practice is when I see a filling defect, um, unless it's very, very well defined, I will go to lung windows and make sure that there's not motion there. Um, sometimes also coronal imaging can help you. Um, sometimes the motion is not in the axial plane, like in this case, it's clearly motion in the axial plane. Um, but in some cases, there's motion in the craniocaudal plane. Um, so using multiplanar reformats is very helpful. Um, now, shifting to other things that are not pulmonary artery uh, filling defects, but uh, may simulate or be confused with pulmonary emboli. Um, so we'll start with some mucus plugging here. Um, so you can see these bronchi are right next to their accompanying pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries are well pacified. The bronchi are, of course, filled with mucus. Um, but you can imagine that if you're um, not paying very good attention or, um, you know, if there's motion artifact or something that is obscuring uh, what 
is pulmonary artery and what is bronchus, um, that you could mistake these for pulmonary artery uh, defects. So again, it's important to look for the adjacent bronchus, uh, adjacent pulmonary artery and bronchus, uh, if you're not sure, and trace the apparent filling defect back to the pulmonary artery. That's really the key. Um, same thing with this case here. We've got a filling defect in a vessel. Um, this one is clearly the pulmonary vein, but obviously in a more peripheral pulmonary vein, it may not be clear. Um, the pulmonary veins are going to opacify later than the pulmonary arteries. Um, so if you have a really good pulmonary arterial phase, um, your pulmonary veins are going to have a lot of mixing artifacts in them. And again, the key here is really to trace um, your filling defect to a pulmonary artery branch to be sure that, um, that it's not a vein. Um, lymph nodes can be confusing. Um, more, they're more confusing for chronic PE than they are for acute PE, right? Because they're along the edges um, of the vessel. Um, but you can see here, um, right lower lobe pulmonary artery, there's the bronchus, and here is a lymph node, which is triangular in shape. Um, Multiplanary formats can help you here. Um, the other thing to note is that the lymph node is always going to be outside of the pulmonary artery, and so the pulmonary artery um, width uh, or diameter should be the same as it passes over the lymph node, whereas a chronic PE, of course, you'd expect the uh, vessel to be narrowed by the filling defect. All right, here are a few other um, things uh, to be aware of. Um, in patients who have undergone uh, lobectomies, uh, you'll have a, a stump of the pulmonary artery right above the staple line here that, uh, because of the density of contrast you can't see, but that's actually the staple line there. And here's a filling defect within the right lower lobe um, stump. Uh, so that's called stump thrombus. Uh, it's not a pulmonary embolus and does not require anticoagulation. Um, this was an interesting case where we saw focal dilation of a pulmonary artery segment with a small filling defect. Uh, the filling defect doesn't show up that well in these images, but you can see the focal dilation of this pulmonary artery segment here. Um, and this patient recently had a small hands catheter. And so this is actually a small pulmonary artery pseudoaneurysm um, with a tiny bit of mural thrombus in it. It's not a pulmonary embolism. Uh, all right, so moving on to uh, some non-thrombotic filling defects, but the uh, things that are important um, to know about. So of course we have tumor emboli. Um, this of course looks like a PE and it is embolic, um, but instead of being a thrombus that embolizes actually um, embolization of um, uh, tumor into the pulmonary artery in this patient with endometrial cancer, you can see that it's um, FDG added on uh, PET-CT. In patients with tumor thrombus, the vessel tends to be quite expanded, um, and you may see an adjacent uh, sort of not, you know, pulmonary metastasis, but you may not, like in this case. Um, but the vessels tend to be much more expanded than they are even in acute PE. Um, in general, I would say that in acute PE, while it is described that pulmonary artery segments are going to be enlarged, it's typically a very, very mild enlargement, um, but in tumor thrombus, you will see marked enlargement. So I would say if you see true enlargement of a pulmonary artery with a filling defect, you should really question whether, uh, question in your mind at least, whether it could be a, a tumor embolus. This is a patient with a primary sarcoma of the pulmonary artery, um, and whereas this case is maybe <clears throat> more obvious that it's a, a true mass, sometimes these can be uh, a little bit more um, elongated and uh, and may simulate pulmonary embolism. Um, the clue is, again, lobulated margins. Um, these will persist over time. Um, you frequently will see pulmonary metastases in these cases. Um, and you'll often see also heterogeneous enhancement of the lesion, um, even on CT. Uh, so those are all clues to think about um, that it's not uh, simply a pulmonary embolus. Um, <clears throat> now one phenomenon, this doesn't really simulate PE, but it is something that uh, confuses a lot of people, um, are small hyperdense um, foci in the pulmonary arteries. We occasionally see these um, and people tend to question whether there's embolized material. Um, in this case, you can see that it was present on the arterial phase and then resolved on the venous phase. Uh, and so this was just, we believe, some sort of clumped intravenous contrast. Maybe it's contrast adhered to a small thrombus or something. We're not really sure. Um, but if you see these things um, in pulmonary arteries, they're usually nothing to worry about.
Okay, finally, we're going to talk about um, pulmonary infarcts that are not caused by PE. Um, if you see a wedge-shaped uh, wedge area of consolidation in the lung, you should definitely think about and look for a PE. Um, but there are other things that can cause this. And so here's a patient who had recently undergone um, atrial fibrillation ablation, um, who presented with chest pain. You can see this peripheral wedge-shaped uh, area of consolidation with a reverse halo sign. We've got central clearing here. It's a very classic for pulmonary infarct. Um, there was no pulmonary arterial uh, embolus here, um, but if you examine the pulmonary veins, here's where the left superior pulmonary vein is supposed to be, and you can see it's entirely thrombosed. So if you see a, what looks like an infarct and you can't find a pulmonary embolism, you should look for an obstructing um, venous cause. Um, <clears throat> and they can also see that caused by tumors in some cases. Um, here is a case of pulmonary infarct caused by... Um, embolization of a uh, septic embolus. Uh, so in this case, you can see the large vegetation along the tricuspid valve, and here is an embolus in the right lower pulmonary artery with extensive surrounding inflammatory change. Here is another example in the left lower lobe pulmonary artery here in a patient with septic emboli. You can see the more classic septic emboli on the right side and infarction of the left lower lobe. Um, and again, uh, more uh, um, vegetation along the tricuspid valve and the main pulmonary artery, and then it's embolized um, it's on the subsequent scan, embolized into the distal right pulmonary artery, and causes a large area of infarction um, in the right lung. Here's a case, as I was alluding to earlier, um, with tumor in the hilum causing multiple pulmonary infarcts in the left lung. Um, you can see that the pulmonary veins are completely occluded in this case. Um, so in summary, we've talked about a bunch of things that can simulate PE um, and other pitfalls in uh, evaluating pulmonary, uh, pulmonary embolism CTs. Um, so remember that mixing artifacts, and uh, which may be caused from early imaging, slow flow and underlying lung disease, or bronchial artery inflow, um, those tend to be ill-defined, wispy, almost smoke-like. Um, so those are your clues, and uh, what you can do in those cases is just repeat the scan with the delay. Uh, for example, triggering from the aorta. Uh, motion artifacts, really multiplanary formats, are, and Wintland lung image, lung windows are your friend here. Um, other things, <clears throat> we mentioned mucus plugging, pulmonary veins, and lymph nodes. NPRs and uh, lung windows can help um, you figure out, just you make sure you trace the filling defect back to a known pulmonary artery. Um, and don't forget that we can have pulmonary infarcts from non-PE causes. Um, such as venous obstruction um, or tumor or infection.